chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again An equilateral triangle TQR is drawn inside a square PQRS. This is a small diagram that is available with us. We will mark the various vertices. This will be marked as P, this is marked as Q, this is marked as R and this is marked as S. I had drawn this diagram without the vertices marked and I know that this is P, this is Q, this is R and this is S. Now, an equilateral triangle TQR is drawn inside. This is our equilateral triangle that is inside the square. I will mark it as T. This vertex is T. So, TQR is the equilateral triangle inside this square. The value of the angle PTS has to be found out. That is, we have to find out the value of this angle X. The best thing is to begin by marking the information that is available to us and then when we have sufficient information on the diagram, then some way can be found out for obtaining the value of the angle X. Now what information do we have? One thing is that this angle is 60 degrees. All the angles of this equilateral triangle are 60. And likewise, this angle is also 60 degrees that we can mark. And another thing this PQR is a right angle triangle. All the four angles of a square are 90 degrees. So, this angle, this angle will be equal to 30 degrees. So, that 30 and 60 will add up to 90. Then another thing, we know that this equilateral triangle is standing on the edge QR. So, each of the sides of this equilateral triangle is equal to the side of the square. This side we can mark is equal to this and this is in turn going to be equal to this. All the four sides of a square are equal. And all the sides of this equilateral triangle are equal to the side of the square. So, this side will be equal to this side. Let me mark this angle as alpha. And this angle will also be alpha because PQT is an isosceles triangle with two sides QT and PQ equal to each other. So, this angle alpha will have to be equal to this angle alpha. This is one thing. Now, let us do some mathematics to obtain the value of this alpha. It can be obtained because this is alpha, this is alpha and this is already known as 30. Let us now write the value of alpha. We will write since triangle PQT is isosceles. Since triangle PQT is isosceles, we should have alpha plus alpha plus 30 equal to 180 degrees. That is these two will be equal which implies this alpha and alpha will become 2 alpha equal to 180 minus 30 take this 30 to the other side equal to 180 minus 30 is 150 
which implies alpha should be equal to 150 by 2 equal to 75 degrees. So we can say that this angle, this angle alpha is equal to 75 degrees. And on the similar lines, if we attend to this a uh, triangle TQ, uh, TSR, we will be able to prove that this angle should also be equal to 75 degrees. Now we have this is known, this is known, this is known, x is not known. Now we have a way out that we can add all these four angles. Their sum should be equal to 360 and there will be an equation in just one variable x which is solvable and that will be our answer. Let us now write the sum of angles but before that let me complete this step. Similarly, similarly angle str should be equal to 75 degrees and adding the complete angle what do we get 75 plus x plus 75 plus 60 should be equal to 360. We have added this 75, this x, this 75 and this angle. This sum should be 360 which implies 75, 75 is 150, add 60, 210. I can write x plus 210 should be equal to 360 and which implies x should be 360 minus 210 which is equal to 150 degrees which should be the answer to this question. Let us move on to our next question now. D is any point on side AC of triangle ABC. Let me first of all draw a triangle ABC so that I have a clear picture of what is available to me. This is A, this is B and this is C. D is any point on side AC. So let me take this as the point D of the side AC of triangle ABC. So this is the side AC and D is any point on this side. If P, Q, X, Y are the midpoints of AB, BC, AD and DC respectively. So P is the midpoint of AB. I will take some approximation here. This is the approximate midpoint. P is the midpoint of AB and Q is the midpoint of BC. I write Q here. Q is the midpoint of BC and X is the midpoint of AD and Y is the midpoint of DC. This is DC and Y is the midpoint of DC. Then the ratio of PX to QY. PX is your this segment. Let us join that. This is PX and this is the segment QY. We have to find out the ratio of PX to QY. This question is a typical application of the midpoint theorem. For this, what we will do is start by join, join D to B. Let us start by joining D and B. Let us join them. From D we carry a line towards D. So we have joined B and D together. 
Now we will concentrate on this triangle ABD. Let us have a look on this triangle ABD. What do we see? Since P is the midpoint of AB, we will write this is equal to this. AP is equal to PB. And similarly, since X is the midpoint of AD, we will write this two tick and this two tick. We can write in triangle, in triangle ABD, in triangle ABD, PX is a segment, is a segment joining midpoints of midpoints of two sides so so we should have px equal to half of bd and px parallel to BD. This is by the midpoint theorem. Now we know from the midpoint theorem that a segment joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side which is BD and half of it. So PX will be half of BD and PX will be parallel to BD. Now similarly, we can attend to this lower triangle, lower triangle. Here we know that Q is the midpoint of BC. So this tick should be equal to this tick. And likewise, likewise, this tick should be equal to this tick because Y is the midpoint of DC. And QY becomes a segment joining the midpoints of this side and this side of the triangle. So QY will be parallel to the third side and half of it. So we can write similarly, similarly for triangle BDC. QY will be half of BD and QY will be parallel to BD. Now we have sufficient information to obtain our answer. Ratio of PX to QY is required. Just divide this by this which implies PX 2QY should be half of BD, PX is equal to BD is known, 2 half of BD which is equal to 1 is to 1 which is the answer. Let us move on to our next question now.